parallel interwebs and inter oh, interwebs. No, interwebs and internet people. People in the car right now, lah. Happy Monday to everyone who's listening. If you're not listening on a Monday, shame on you. You should be. Okay. Uh, it's a brand new week, and you know, with brand new weeks, we like to say. Uh, yes. I mean, we could also say, welcome back to another episode of the Table Talk Podcast, formerly known as the Takeaway Table Podcast, but man, that name is too long. It is. But we say it every week. That's right. This week, we have an amazing guest with us. I am so excited. It's been a long time coming. Okay. Uh, long time listener. Okay. Uh, great friend. Okay. Even better singer. Okay. He is also very good at Dota. And he is here from Singapore. Uh, who Round you, applause for who you, who you be? Who you be? What? what My you name who you be? Right. His name. My name who you be? <laughs> We've got Cesare in the hey, studio hi. with us today. Hey. It's me. It's me. It's me. Hey. It's me. Abang. Whenever you you introduce me, Ming, I get really scared. Oh, I don't feel like you want to touch me in, in weird ways. I do. Yeah, but we'll do that off camera. Yeah, okay. No, uh, um, okay. Okay. So Zari's yeah. back with us again. It's not his first it's time. It's nice on the show. to be back. It is. Man, it's we so love nice having to be you back. here, dude. She, uh, Zari has been here before. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. This is Plenty the first times. time back since we installed this dope set behind yes, us. Right. Yeah, this is dope, by the way. Oh man, if this you have really no dope. idea what we're talking about, uh, you should be tuning into the YouTube uh, version yes, of this podcast. Yes, you need podcast. to yeah. see the set, guys. You need to see it. That's actually my low key. That's my vinyl over there. There we go. Thanks for thanks for uh, no, we got we got the plug. We got the shout out. We got the plug, man. We got the plug, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. You know, thanks, funny guys. story. We were yeah. actually in Singapore a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. How about uh, days ago? This was also a week. Also weeks ago, ago okay. on your show yeah. with Shaza, his wife. Yeah. And mm. they have a talk show, stream show called Welp Tonight. Yeah, that was, that's fine. Um, mm. Man, that was... We're going to d- jump into that a little bit later because that's something I feel we want to talk about in the podcast. But today, before we jump into a daunting sort of topic that you probably clicked on on Spotify, I'm like, whoa, daunting. are they going deep again? Yes, we're going deep again. Every week. Um, we want to talk about what's been happening in the world. In the world of Cesare. In the world of Cesare and just in the just world, in the world, full in stop. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Um, have you heard about... Storm Area 51? Oh, man. I haven't actually. Okay. At this point in time, we listen yeah. to this podcast, the hottest thing online right now it is, is this... Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, the, the founder meant it as a joke. I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure, like, you know what? Maybe it's a personal dream of his, but let's do it for the lols. Yeah. He started up a group that invited people like, guys, on this are, date, we are going to invade Area, Area 51. 51. And for everyone who's listening who has no idea what Area 51 is, Area 51 is basically <laughs> I cannot even. a... It's right now, it's an official US government base. Which right. Which is in the US. Because, which is off limits. You know, which is off limits. But the thing is, because of science fiction movies and a lot of like novels and, and media, everyone believes that Area 51 is where the government is keeping aliens. Keeping yeah. aliens. Not yeah. the Mexicans who hot the border, I, but aliens oof. from outer space. Yeah. Zari, do we believe right. in aliens? I wanna. You want to? I'm like, logical brain aside, I want to believe in aliens. Right, right. I, think, I think it's very plausible. Yeah, yeah. might not like, be the only even one. Even as a kid, I, right. I, I would read up on like Area 51 and yeah. like as science a, fiction books. As a kid, I just need to look uh, behind my house at my neighbor at the back. I'm pretty sure there was an alien. Oh my okay. goodness. Okay, what do you think is actually <laughs> in Area 51? Wow. Man, I don't know. Something extremely... I, w- I, w- I would say that the aliens are just to throw people off from right? something far yeah. more important yeah. than Dude, aliens. Dude, it could be like a time machine, dude. Oh, man. Oh, like man. Something massive. Okay, what's the no, craziest no, no, no. thing? Okay. What's the craziest thing, First right? craziest thing you could think of, like, off the bat? I legit think there are, I, whether you well, call them aliens or non-human life. Yeah. Right? I, I, I legit think that some <laughs> thing is going down there, dude. Yeah. I think it's all government secrets. It's all government secrets. Evolve, like... Osama Bin Laden, uh, Michael Jackson's living there right now. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. You never know. Tupac, Tupac's Tupac. hanging out with Michael. That, that's where Biggie 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 hanging out. That's where legendary people go to retire. Ah. Elvis Presley. Okay, that would so. be a great idea for so oh, that would be, oh, that would be a great idea for a comedy though. Com- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So no, that basically that's, dude. that's yeah. what's floating around the internet. Everyone's yeah. kind of jumping in on jump. Let's so did they Air actually 51. invade not Air yet. 51? Not yet. The US government and military has strongly advised against storming it okay. because right. they are prepared to defend whatever is in Air 51. Which yeah, makes dude. it even I feel mm. it makes it even more like I want to know now why you why you don't let us come in. So at at, at the start it was kind of a joke. Mm. But the group got around yeah. to a point where even celebrities are jumping on yeah, board yeah. right now. Uh, so most, Stallone, most recent addition Chuck Norris is who's that Pacquiao guy? Pacquiao, uh, Manny, Manny Pacquiao? No, no, no. Uh, oh, shucks. He's this really gangster looking Mexican dude actor. 
I I might be racist at this point, it but it sounds a little bit slightly. Right. I I I should have done research We're on this. Jump on to the yeah. next thing, uh-huh. but um, you guys can Google it up. So yeah. Area Fifty One, <laughs> if you guys let us know what you think about Area Fifty One, we want to know because. I Man. think aliens real, so yeah, they're, they're definitely hiding there. I just want you guys to know if you're listening from the states, uh, wait don't for your friends' it, updates, uh, don't You don't do have it. to go for this. If it's a rally to save your country, like when it's you know voting day, like Hong Kong and Malaysia, that kind of thing, you go. Yeah, mm. in fifty one, maybe donate lah. Uh, your this own white people stuff. things. I feel like this is white people things, right? Yeah, this is privilege. <laughs> okay. Um, in other news, <clears throat> Najib. Has recently, uh, been, <laughs> Najib has recently been uh, under the radar yet again mm. for a amazing amount spent in a jewelry jewelry store overseas. Amazing, right? So they they they, they are, <laughs> it's it's a round up number. I'm not sure if it's specific, but he basically spent three point three million ringgit. This is recently, it's right? Re- I mean, the records the recently records yeah, recently revealed. Earthed. But he apparently spent three point three million ringgit. Uh, buying jewelry, which he claims is for a royalty family of hmm. another country that he cannot name. You know, I I don't know if right. you Malaysians know this, right? right? But we get we get a lot of Malaysian news. Like just you were you were telling yeah, us. Yeah, I was that. telling them. Yeah, like it's really weird. Like we get more Malay because I don't know if it's like juicier up here or Definitely. it's right. just like you it know. could be a political scheme to get you distracted. No, yeah, from no, things, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, yeah. I I I don't know. It yeah, might be. It, is, yeah. it might because be. Because I was mentioning. Yeah. Lake, like in people in Singapore yeah. always hear about the screwed up things that Malaysia's yeah, going through. Yeah, it's funny, like because because as a person who follows both Malaysian media yeah, yeah. and Singaporean media of like all sorts, right? Yeah. Like the things that the Singaporean media pick out are so different from the things that Malaysian media yeah, pick out. You know, yeah. it's so it's so interesting to be like in the middle going like Huh. Oh, that was oh you saw that you saw negativity in that oh cool oh you you saw positivity it's in that may, for sure okay, maybe that's, that's why all our Singaporean friends are so scared to come to KL. I think so, dude. I don't know. Do you because think it's a classic? Look at them; they're doing really bad. <laughs> oh look, they burned another car. Yeah, there's another riot here. No, I think I think in every country, like the sense of like it depends on your sense of nationality, lah, right? And, and like everybody wants to feel like they are the best, you know. Therefore. Like nobody wants to admit that ah oh, we are we are bad in this area or whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like especially when you come from somewhere that like conditions you to be the best, you know. Yeah, like, right. Wow. And a lot of countries do that. Like yeah. they condition you as young children to like. Oh, you are doing this for your country because we are doing this and this and this and this, right? And as a young kid, you get conditioned to believe that, oh, everything that I do subconsciously is like yeah. I'm representing my country, you right. know? And and Singapore more so than anyone else. Yeah, yeah Singapore has we, we. I mean, I I have to admit that we have this like behind the scenes process where we are so we want to excel at everything. That's we called do. the. That's literally called kiasu. Yeah, it's literally it's and like Malaysians though. like yeah. to say this about Singaporeans. Oh, you're so yeah. kiasu, but we're yeah. like. It's I don't get it. Right? But yeah. it's, 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 it's like ingrained, ingrained right? yeah. 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 That it's like, like water. Yeah, like sing- a lot of Singaporeans like will be like, breathe. yeah, why be like shit? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Correct. And then f- like a lot of people in the middle will go like, well, not everybody's circumstances are as great as yours. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's really like you have to really split yourself down the middle and go like, it, it helps for me lah. Because right. like I have family here. Right, right. And you got I have family there. Yeah. You got to balance and it. And I work here and I work there. Yeah. So it's like, I get to see everything in this really weird limbo zone. Yeah. Right. Where people are like flinging shit at each other that they don't need to. Yeah, they're, yeah. Like, and they're not even hitting. Yeah, not even hitting anything. Like, at, this guys, point, right. at this point in the podcast, I yeah. think uh, most of our very intellectual listeners are probably confused. No, yeah. I think that's we're a going great through Area Fifty One. We're yeah. going through the Singapore Malaysia relations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was a on? really good segue of like how, how he was talking about how yeah. in Singaporean culture or like maybe just the way that you've been brought up, right? That right. There's a there's this embedded excellence in you, mm, right? right? And and I think that segues really well into our. Let's tie it back to the topic. Yeah, to the topic today. We're today we're talking about what do you do. When the biggest obstacle is yourself, uh-huh. or are you stopping yourself from being the best you? Quote mm-hmm. unquote, right. Instagram, uh, lookbook, Tumblr phrase. Time to get over yourself. Wow. Yeah. Time to get over yourself. What oh. is getting over yourself? And I, I think the reason why I, I wanted to talk about this topic today was because this is a really dear friend. Um, we've we've shared a lot of bathing stories, like, right? Babies well, we also. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, but, but, so in, <laughs> I think in this short. I, I don't know. We've known each other for quite a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it feels short and long. Yeah, yeah But yeah. there's a lot of stories and, I, and I, 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 when you get to hear more about him and his life, um, there's a lot of 
There's a lot of things you pick up from, and I felt like he would be a great person to talk about um, the the struggle of yourself, what? Mm, mm, right? Mm. And something I think everyone can relate to because um, I, I was saying this to the guys earlier on. I feel like everyone, if you're listening to this back home as well, everyone is on the verge of something new. Everyone yeah. is on the verge of, of, of a brand new thing that you've not done yet. Or we like to think so. Or we like to think or so. Or we like to think you so. You know, whether it's a physical thing, whether you're about to buy property or a car, right. whether you're about to, to enter an exam, whether you're about to get into a new relationship or come out from a relationship, okay, everyone cool. is on the verge of something. Oh boy. And I feel like a lot of times when all the external factors or internal factors are a goal, the only thing stopping you from making that move is yourself. I mean, we hear it all the time. Mm. We hear it like, oh man, I can't, I can't stand my job. I yeah. can't stand what I'm doing. You know, I want to go out there. And then you ask them like, so why aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, they do that. And then like, ah, oh, man, I can't. Yeah. But that's the answer. That's you can't. The answer. You can't. So wow. how do we get over you? Yeah. How do we get over you? And uh, I think just, just uh, you know, just to say, yeah. uh, just to put it out there, Cesare has a very interesting life. It is quite, quite. a life of literally, I think the only person stopping you from doing anything is you. Yeah. That yeah. has been the circumstance and <laughs> you've yeah. achieved a lot of really different things yeah. uh, when you just got over that. Let's, That's it. let's yeah. maybe paint a bigger picture. So Cesare is a Singaporean Malay young man yeah. who, you know, is a singer, talented yeah. musician who also just maybe coincidentally won Singapore Idol maybe. when he was younger. Yeah, maybe. For funsies. Ten right? years ago. Almost. Ten years ago. And right. he's a recording artist. And so I think, um, you know, when you're a solo artist, mm -hmm. you don't have like a band. Right. Right. Um, what happens when work is you <laughs> and you're kind of like the boss of yourself? It's really weird because like, you set out, like I, I started out my career playing in a band, right? Yeah. And like when you're used to the brand being the band that's like cool and all because you're part of it and if anything f***s up, like messes up or anything, right? Yeah. It's just you and your friends sharing the load. Yeah. But when it's just you and your name out there as the brand, it's... Nothing to blame, yeah, man. There's no one to blame but yourself, la, right? Yeah. And man. like everything ties into what you do. Like people's impression of what you eat can link to their impression of how you live your life people's impression of like who your friends are you know can lead into a and right, right. Uh, it's subconsciously people just want to people just want to pick out certain things that they they, they want to see in your life mm, because yeah. they're they're invested in you somehow yeah. Um, yeah. and i'm talking about in the sense of like music fans right. and and like social media followers right they're invested in you they want they want to they want to live vicariously through you and like the thing about me is just like i entered this wanting to be a singer not really wanting to influence anybody or anything so the whole social media game for me at the start of my career was like a huge question mark like mm. i didn't really know what to do in that realm i didn't understand what i needed like i've been i've been doing this for 10 years mm. and i don't think i've reached the follower count that's like substantial or anything not that i care but i also do note and do realize that it's because in the earlier part of my career, I really didn't give a shit, uh, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's why we're all friends, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, I, I really... <laughs> and, I, and I really yeah, wish yeah. I did, you know? Because, like, yeah, I yeah. always thought that... You know, like, I always thought that I needed to be good at just one thing. Right. And then if I'm just really good at one thing, there'll be people who will notice me and then uh, right. be good at the other things for me, right? Yeah. Right. That's, but I think there's so much to talk just yeah. on what you've said. Yeah, but now. moving on, like, yeah. I felt like I always was that guy, you know, like... Right. Uh, I know what some someone else can write this part for me or someone else can do the artwork for me or right. someone else can produce this for me. Right, right. And the problem was always that there's no one else that I felt that could do it but me. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of like an ego thing, I think, a little right. bit as well. Right. But like, that's the thing that I think is really important, when, especially when you're making art and when the, your, the brand is you, mm -hmm. right? Is that... Since the brand is you, why not listen to yourself and, and think about the things that really mean a lot to you instead of what you think is cool to be done, you know? Yeah. Like, I think that was the switch for me um, in discovering that the obstacle was me. Yeah. Is that I switched from like, okay, what, what do I really want to talk about that won't make me feel like shit when I'm up there? Or like, even when I feel like I'm going to die, I can still do it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. like for me, that was simple. Like I started to write more about like my wife. You know, mm -hmm. I started to write more about the things that made me happy or the things that make me really sad, instead of the things that I think people want to hear on the radio. Yeah. Right. And that was when that was when I think I genuinely hit hit strides because like, 
and it doesn't happen for all artists and I'm and I know that I'm a I'm most of the time in a in a in a place of privilege lah to be yeah. given this opportunity to be able to write what you want to write yeah but man I have to say I took that opportunity and I squished it really hard yeah. I didn't squeeze it the best that I could right. as as all artists think but like squashed it really hard with one hand not that they didn't used to one hand. not yet just squashed one hand. it really hard with one hand all and right. go like this is the amount of juice I can get with yeah. just squashing it with one hand. Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. Gotta give it a go, man. Oh Don't be afraid to do <laughs> shit. So let's just, <laughs> just unpacking that uh, yeah. that paragraph of your life right now. I think. First and foremost, like people don't get over yourself because there's a fear of failure. Like you said, mm-hmm. you're doing it solo. You know, there's no team. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to leave the safety of conformity. Yeah. Because once you do that, you got no one to blame, uh, but yourself. Yeah. What was yeah. that one thing that pushed you? I don't know. That? Okay, like coming back to that too. I always like, and this is just me. Okay. Right. Like it might not be what's actually going on. Right. 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 But me internally, my internal experience was always that people are out to bring me down. Oh. And that's not a very healthy mm. thing it to is, have, you know. It's, it's not, not it's like not. now on hindsight, but I've always felt like because like I was the third Malay guy to win Idol, you know, and that was like the headline literally was another Malay guy won Idol. Yeah. Right. 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 And in Singapore, <laughs> in Singapore, there's this stigma that like. Oh, if you're Malay, you're only you're good at singing and like this and this and this, you right. know, because like okay. the Malays always win the singing competitions, so it's like the very kampung spirit kind of thing that you always expect the Malay people. Oh, the Malay people like to vote. Oh, okay. the Malay. So yeah. it's like it's kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. It's a it's a stereotype. Right. So like when <laughs> when can you imagine how funny it is? Like yeah. it's kind of funny lah, right? It's a culture shock to hear. Yeah, it's a culture <laughs> shock to hear <laughs> yeah. because you are the complete opposite of that being mm. Malaysian Chinese, right? But yeah. the funny thing really is like it was really funny to hear and and read that like oh I'm just another Malay guy yeah right and that that like really set in you know yeah. and like and from then on like the girl that got second they signed her as well and I'm like oh then I remembered like all the collaterals and all the like promo for that season was like are we gonna get a new female idol or whatever and yeah. I realized that hey yeah the odds were kind of stacked against me yeah. and I still for some reason I'm still here I gotta yeah. make my best out of it then yeah. that was really the impetus of what like yeah of what um right drove me to kind of just shed out all these insecurities and just be me, la, you know? Mm. Yeah. And it's so liberating to like, I, I, I remember I used to be so afraid of what to say whenever I'm on camera. Because right. like when the camera turns on, I'm like, <laughs> I suddenly think of all these responsibilities that I have, you know, right, to, right. to all these people and all these other, like, I'm yeah. like, okay, I can't say this. Oh, I can't say this either. I can't say, uh, uh, and like, you know, I never felt like I could really say anything at all. Yeah. And like, once you grow older, and it's really a process of like growing older, and also being self-aware. So yeah. you grow older, you get slightly more self-aware and you look at that and go, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. You throw it out. Yeah. And you go older again and yeah. then you get slightly more self-aware and you're like, okay, that's bad. And, and that's really the process of getting older that's been really exciting for me. Yeah, mm. I think like yeah. what, what you mentioned, which is something that everyone unfortunately has to go through is like when you grow up, there's a lot of things that are said to you or, or expected of you <coughs> that create perceptions of where you are in this box, yeah. right? Like whether it's parents, whether it's teachers or friends, yep. the public right now with social media as well, everyone has this now, this fear of either not conforming to what is expected or if, if, there, are, mm. if there are words that are said to you, you kind of put yourself inside this box. And I think with with that, of course, it's, it's difficult to say that I, I'm the only one who's stopping myself from becoming a better person. Mm. But in, in, I mean, in actual fact, it's, it's what's said to you it's how you kind of like take it from yep. there right and um, like you mentioned I think the very powerful part of that is being self-aware Yeah. when you know that all of these maybe untruthful things being said to you don't have a hold on who you actually are Yeah. Um, there needs to be a process where we actually screen all of them like, no exactly who am I actually right? and I think the biggest privilege in the world is not being born with a silver spoon or not being born with the most talents but being born with self-awareness i think like it's something that you're either born with some people just have it or it's something that you you adapt to and and learn to grow from 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 being you as you grow older but like that is the most privilege to have because with self-awareness right you can literally critically think of all your moments and go this is bad this is bad this is good and then go from there you know like with self-awareness there's so much that you can do rather than just being good at one thing you know yeah yeah for those listening in i think um Man, self-awareness is, I, I would say that's the first step, right? Yeah. Knowing that there's something here that I don't want. Yeah. There's something over there that I want and I got to get there. Mm. What would be, I think, I think maybe let's just take it. Let's just, you know, all good things considered, right? A lot of people listening into this like, no, no, no. 
I know what I want. I'm aware. I'm aware of my situation. I'm aware I want to go, but I'm scared. Yeah. Mm. What, <coughs> what is the thing that kind of poured that whole pot of courage into you? I right think the that self-awareness is also understanding, looking at your fear and literally going like, where is this coming from? Right. I think that's really important as well. Looking Understanding at, your fear. Yeah. So like that self-awareness, right? Like, mm. okay, fear is stopping me. Yes, I'm afraid. Yeah. Why am I afraid? Mm. What has, yeah, yeah. How, how did it get to this point? Right. You know, like how did I, and you know, your, your decisions, your, your life and your decisions are all an accumulation of like the things that has happened to you on the way you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like some things are genetic yeah, yeah but everything else like it's a concoction of like all the good and bad things all the childhood traumas yeah, right. that lead you into this moment and right. going like I'm so scared I'm anxious AF like I can't do this right? right and like I think the first step to that is really having understand like um, how like okay for me like just personal I don't want to share this I'm really I have like a and like my close friends know this but I have a huge phobia of birds Mm. And it's like the and it's the most unexplainable thing in my life yeah, just that I ever experienced because when I see a pigeon out in alfresco dining, I literally get palpitations. I want to vomit. Yeah. Oh my like God. it's like repulsive to me, and I get like oh my, my hair Lord. stands. And when there's a pigeon that goes on the table, my hair stands, and I just literally want to puke and gag. Right. Oh my God. And like for the longest time, I'm like, where is this? Like I don't remember. A moment. I don't remember the a moment until you. I did remember a moment. Until, you did remember until I did. I remembered like my first. So me and my wife, we were sitting down, and we usually do this like at the end of the week or whatever. We spend two hours talking to each other, just like talking and like yeah. just talk, 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 talk. About the you. birds. Yeah, and like we just talk about the birds. Uh, and she oh. was like, "Think about the first memory of a bird." Then I was like, first memory." Then there were many memories, right? But the first one that I remember that was that I didn't think was a big memory. Yeah. It was just a memory, you know. Yeah. But it was my brother at a petting zoo. And oh he no. squashed a chick until green ooze came out of its butt. Alama. Yeah, and then like when that image Whoa. came to my head, right? I was like, "That's it." I, oh. I literally gagged. And I was like, "Okay, that was why. That was that was one of the first few things that like traumatized me about yeah, birds. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, right. Uh, is that you can is that you can squeeze them and they might die. Yeah. Oh so I have God. that like fear of that like I don't like you know step on th things yeah. or like whatever oh, that's yeah, so like you, you can really trace back oh like some of the things that that you are afraid of in, in your childhood traumas it's yeah, really scary if you just take the time to really think about because you don't your brain prunes itself you know right it prunes yeah. Out all the memories as and you were young. It copes. And it copes. Yeah, it and prunes it copes and it, it copes. Yeah. So it, it loses all the things that are unimportant or that it thinks are unimportant, right? Okay. And then it, it copes and, and learns how to be better right. from that. Mm. But some things don't get fixed, you know, along the way. It and gets, some traumas yeah. are there. And it morphs just, into something else. Yeah, it morphs right. into something. It morphs right. into anxiety or whatever. I like and the... I like the sorry. And, mm. sorry? Yeah, no, I'm just, I was just saying. Okay, it morphs into anxiety and whatever, right. yeah. Yeah, I, I like the, the visual exercise you brought yourself through. Like, and there's something we could do now, <coughs> like uh, like getting over yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's say in this process, well, this is practical steps, right? Imagine you on one side of a fence, a fence in between something, and the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in this picture now, like imagine you standing on this side, yeah. the you going over the fence, and the you on the other side of the fence. Yeah. All right? <laughs> The funny part thing is, uh, the, the, that person going over the fence, right? There is that guy holding that guy back. Mm. And what you say about like, uh, knowing where your fear is coming from is looking back and like actually looking at what is holding your hand, stopping you from across, yeah, there's a long yeah. chain. crossing over the fence, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and when you actually <laughs> take the time, instead of like, no, I don't look back, no, no, I can't. Yeah. If you take the time to look back and actually identify, yo, what is stopping me from this? Yeah, it literally starts to disappear. Yeah, it, once it, you name it and shame it, it lets go. Yeah, it, it lets <laughs> it go. It's crazy. And, and I like that part. Um, I, I think another thing that we we could talk about when we we talk about getting over yourself, like mm -hmm. literally everything you you know when it comes to fears and stuff like that. I think a big part of getting over yourself, uh, or like becoming a better you, uh is knowing what to let go of yeah. and oh what yeah. you can and cannot control. Oh, yes. Very simply put, like, I don't know, I, I always go back to quite uh, practical examples, like wanna, wanting to leave a job, right? Wanting to become like that thing you always wanted to become. Yeah. Yeah. Things that you can control is stuff like, okay, do I have enough savings? Yeah. Will yeah. money work out for me? All right. That kind of thing, like, you know, these should be the rationale. Yeah. This shouldn't be like, hey, 
I only got ten dollars left in my pocket, but I'm gonna quit my job anyway. Yeah. Mm. And then you know, it's, you're gonna screw your it's life up. Chasing yeah. your dreams, uh, is not as cool as they made you. No, no, yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> They yeah, yeah, yeah. they they shape it for you like chase your dreams and like the government puts in these put money into these yeah, ads that yeah. go like chase your dreams right. be the you you want to be it's not glamorous and like then that, face dude. bankruptcy into yeah years. it's like, not glamorous so, at yeah. all yeah what would be practical steps like even for you like when you wow maybe an interesting would be like when you hit that stride in writing right what you knew that you can't control is what people want to hear mm. yeah. right you can't control that yeah but you knew you could control what you wanted to write. Mm-hmm. What brought you to that? That that thing of like, you know what? I'm letting go of what that... It's experience la, and it's, right. it's understanding that like the best way to be... The best way for me, and this is me, you know, this doesn't apply to any other musician or whatever. Like, I'm, not apply, I'm not saying that that there's one format to everything because mm. there's so many different types of artists and so right. many things that they want to become. Mm. But for me personally, what gives me gratification is like being authentic and understanding that like whenever someone listens to you, they go like, holy shit, you know, like there's something there that compels right. me to listen to it. And there's like, regardless of, of whether it's the lyrics or regardless of whether it's the drum beat or whatever, right. for me, music is like a visceral experience. You know, when you listen to it, there's something mm. that like, there's something that makes you irrational. You know, you listen to it and you go, this is, this is all that I am and all that is meant to be. You know, like mm. when you listen to music, these are all the things that, that yeah. keep you listening to it. And I and to me, that's the most important. Uh, like when, I, when people listen to my music, that they feel that way. You know? Not just like listen to it and go, yeah, that's a cool song yeah. next. Yeah. You know, like, I'm like, hold up, hold mm. up. That's not just the cool song. That's not it's the not goal. enough yeah, for me. You know? not the goal. That's not the yeah, goal. Yeah, so it, it's really not enough for me. And like, I, that's the whole reason why I challenge myself to be better than I was before. Because I think that like, if, if I'm given this privilege to be here and I don't do it, then it's irresponsible of me. Yeah, know? I like that. That's like, I've been given so much, you know, like, mm. and I have to admit, yeah, I've been given more than others in terms of being able to maybe sing a certain way or like I, I grew up with certain different, in a different way than other Malay kids grew up or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I don't know what it was, but like being able to be here and have this privilege to, to do this, it's like, man, like, I got to do it. Uh, yeah, if right? you don't do it, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Right? No, I, I think like, I, I really like the train of thought here um, about how there is a uh, sort of like, not just an awareness of self, but you kind of know what it is you you set out to do. Like you've obviously spent a lot of time kind of sitting alone and, yeah. and, and figuring out inside, what is this I want to achieve? What is the yeah. response I want to get out of the work I'm putting in? Right? Yeah. Um, and then I feel like w- when you have that or if you allow your, yourself to spend time simmering those questions you kind of have a bit more clarity when it comes to where you are right now yeah um and so i feel like when you when, when you know where you are right now and you see where you want to be like what Han said about the fence and all that um what do you do when the again the only thing stopping you is yourself i think earlier before the podcast yeah. we were talking about what you like knowing like not just you, it's not enough to just know where you want to be yeah. Right. You got to do gotta, something about you gotta it. Go you got to go. You got to do something about it. And, yeah. and and for you, you talked about discipline and practice. And yeah. uh, you want to try and chat about that a bit. Yeah. I think like the more the more important thing is to be sure, la, right? Yeah. Like the self awareness is there for you to zoom out and look at the situation and go like, how how can I do it and what will be the best possible way to do it. But once you figure out like the way you want to go, the rest is really all time and determination and like reverse engineering how you need. Like if you want to be a photographer or a musician, reverse yeah. engineer how you get there. Like what yeah. are the skills yeah. required for you to be a good photographer? Yeah. One, like you need like to overnight you get good, right? Yeah, it's not like I want to be a photographer and follow my dreams. I just take photos until people say it's good. No, like no, hell no. You know what I mean? Go for classes, yeah. like learn yeah. what every single function in your camera, learn everything like mm, mm. what are the abbreviations mm. like what what's what kind of color correction you need to do to your pictures like yeah. it applies to music as well like if you want to be a guitarist like yeah. know every know everything about the guitar like where like where what kind of sounds what gauge strings make you know everything like immerse yourself completely in it so that you get a chance to to feel what it's like to just do one thing and be good at it yeah yeah but like the 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 problem now is also 
to to understand that you can't just be good at one thing. So you need to be able to like s- kind of like separate your time between doing multiple things also. Yeah. Right? Like I want to be a good guitarist, but I also need a soft skill to be able to understand how to record my guitar playing on a Mac. Yeah. For example, like those are the soft skills that you need to so spend right. like like really just reverse engineer everything and yeah. figuring out how you need to get there. Is, yeah. is, is, is it, has that been your process? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I always like to bring up this story whenever I'm with Cesare <laughs> and with new people. Um, basically, you you are actually you're, you're a guitarist. Yeah. You grew up playing the guitar a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but for one of your I guess latest tracks is called "It's You." Yeah. Um, <laughs> you had to. It, it's a very piano based song. And you don't really play piano. Yeah. And I always like to bring up this story because I still feel it's so... It, it's it's a testament of how the self... I guess the commitment and, and willingness to do it. Capable. Uh. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and basically, I, and, okay, you and, learn and how to play piano. I, I learned how to... I, I listened to the song and yeah. I, I transcribed it and figured it out. And the thing is, right, I, don't, I didn't feel like... I don't feel like it's something that's difficult. I really feel like everybody can do it. If you just sit down... And figured out a way to do it. And just but focus. <laughs> yeah, just focus. Uh. It's just yeah. like we do it halfway, then we kind of want to do something else, or you get bored, and you yeah. know what I mean? Like in that one hour, imagine how much you could do if you did nothing else but that. Yeah. So there yeah. is a there is a very scary and powerful um, drive for the mind when you kind of like discipline yourself to do that. Yeah. Because I mean, usually I took piano lessons for like years and I'm still cracked. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> sat the down for two. Appreciation for it wasn't there. Yeah, it wasn't there. <laughs> but you sat down for yeah. like what uh, two weeks, and then now you can. You most most of your live shows you're playing keyboard already now, dude. Yeah, it's fun because I I always envision myself to be. It's kind of cool, you know, like. Yeah. It's, a, it's a weird stereotype also that like Malay kids don't play keyboard because like, yeah. in Singapore like only only mm. the Chinese kids correct, get, get correct, to play correct. violin next, and, and, here, key, and pianos next right? to the Uhu piano is our tradition yeah the yeah. Malay boys who play you know yeah. the Malay boys who play guitar and shit so yeah. like I'm like yeah I, it's kind of like that yeah. kind of kind of made me feel like hey, it's, yeah. it'll be kind of a cool thing to learn also yeah. so yeah no, but, but, but that was the process where you kind of like figured out I mean that was a very practical one where you knew that okay I need to play the piano for this song. Yeah. Uh, I want to perform live with the piano. I want to get there. The only thing stopping me is my lack of skill. And now because I want to get the skill, yeah. I'm I'm allowing and enabling myself to get to that goal. Yeah, it's like re- literally in reverse engineering. Like I need to play. What do I need to do to be able to play? I have you need music theory, you need technical skills. Okay, I kinda know music theory. Yeah. So I need technical skills. Who I like, do I do I hire a teacher? Yeah, I could. Or I could just YouTube how to play every single scale and learn that. Yeah. So like, okay, how to play the scale of uh, C sharp? Start from C sharp because C is easy, and then like, literally learn C sharp for an hour, and then like, okay, let's go uh, C sharp minor, and then just like, yeah. literally learn everything like that you need to learn. Just like, just because it's so overwhelming, mm-hmm. doesn't mean you can't do it. You know, just like do oh, it. that's a good one. Just yeah. do it like in little bits. Uh, think about like the micro things that you can do first, and yeah. just keep doing it until it. Eventually, after two days, you'll be like, "Oh crap! I, I kind of got like eight yeah. keys. Yeah, that's crazy." You know, yeah, like I think I think I, I want to really just highlight everything you've just said just mm. now because thank you very much. You know, I don't know why I just said. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best and unpack probably the last fifteen minutes yeah. of this. Yeah. Um, I think the obstacle of getting over ourselves. Uh, number one, people attune it to maybe fear. Right, cause I uh, yeah, I'm scared of doing it. I'm scared. I don't know. Like, but that's human nature. Human nature is the fear of the unknown. Mm. But everything you've just said just now, like you guys have heard Cesare's plans, how you what achieve that. I know I need this. I know I need this. I think it's knowing where you want to go and going where you want to go. Mm. You have to know not just the obstacle that you're facing. After you get the obstacle, what is there? Yeah. I think no one, no one really, really talks about that because yeah. we always say like, I know what's stopping me, but okay, let's take the stop away. What's that on the other end? And you've literally filled it with step one point one, step two point two. Where if I get there, I need this, I need this, I need this. And the beauty of that is the process of getting over the obstacle creates your goal that you want to go. Yeah. Mm. Because you know, let me for example, right? Okay. My obstacle right now, the lack of skills. Mm. So I got to go get my skills. And the beauty of that is in that process of focusing on improving yourself, you forget about the fear of the obstacle. And by the time you get that skill, you're there. Yeah. yeah. You're there. The obstacle is gone. You have the ability to skip over the fence. And 
the the point is like you just have to have this plan. It's not enough just saying like you know I'm stopping myself. You know I'm scared. You know I can't get there. Okay, great. Where do you want to go? Have you sat down and said like I want to do art. What art? You know, have you thought about okay if you want to do art. Where, where's it going to take you? Yeah. If, yeah. If, if you're not married yet, my friends out there, if you're going to do art, how are you going to impress your in-laws? Yeah, They're yeah, probably yeah. going to look at you, right? You got to sit down and go through. This is the, I think, one time I really encourage micromanagement. Mm. You got to go through the details of where you want to go. Because sometimes, the obstacle of you getting over yourself is there is no self at the end of it. Mm. It's skipping over a fence into a hole. Yeah. And, and like, whoo! Surprise, uh, I guess I never ne really knew why I quit my job to pursue actually what is what am I pursuing? What, what's I think the right, also a really cool analogy to think about what you just said is right. like it's like playing a video game. When you find a video game that you like, you play it every day mm. and you don't realize how many hours you're putting into yeah. it. Mm. And suddenly you look at your other friends and you're like, I'm getting much better than they are. Mm -mm. And you're like, wow, I'm getting good at this. And suddenly right. you're a pro. Yeah. So think about whatever you want to do kind of like that. Like, does it give you that much joy, mm. right, for you to be able to... Like, and and this, is all, this is all kind of like very personal, you know, because the joy you get mm. out of doing different things is completely different. From like, some, yeah, the joy that I get from right. like singing is like, yeah, you pay me enough to eat nasi kanda every day. Right. Like that like that's the that's what I'm willing to live with, you know, like yeah. I'm willing to live with the calories. Yeah. Give me the nasi kanda. Yeah, give me the nasi kanda. <laughs> give me that. Like, you know I'll do it. Yeah, I'll just eat that for the rest right. of my life, right? Oh. Just put me in a cardboard box, I'll sleep there. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like sacrifice. And not everybody values that one thing. Right. So you need to understand like how you value how much you value Correct. this and how much you're willing to put into it. How about well. a spin on this, guys? What do you guys think about it? Uh probably my final contribution to this mm. this conversation. Yeah. Um your biggest obstacle to yourself, right? Um, I would say the biggest unknown obstacle to yourself is the fact that most people aren't even comparing themselves to themselves. The biggest obstacle to like improving yourself is you're comparing yourself to someone else and improving on that behalf. That's oh, absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think as, I mean, we're in the creative scene. Yeah. And you know, there's this like, horribly morbid phrase that there's no new ideas. Yeah. yeah. Everything is a rendition of everything else. Yeah. yeah. And we tackle comparison daily on social media. Mm. You put this up and people will be like, oh look, take away, it looks like this show. Oh look, Cesare's music, isn't that like Boys to Men? I'm like, mm. okay. But comparison and the expectation of that. Yeah. How do you get over comparison? How do you get over the fact that maybe my obstacle is I'm not trying to be myself. I'm trying to be someone else. Yeah. You know, I think that is a very unsaid thing because the more you try and if you make the obstacle someone else, the more you try, you're never going to get over that. Yeah. Because that's not your obstacle to face. That is their obstacle to face. Yeah. And you, you got you to gotta bring it back into your own lawn and say, yo, yo, this is my fence. Yeah. What am I really trying to get over? Is this really... Is this really a, career passion problem or is this an insecurity over my abilities problem yeah. and i feel that uh this is really just you we mentioned it just now before you need that time to sit alone and think yeah. you know you got to be real your demons you got to be real your skeletons and and really think like yo Am I improving myself? Here's the problem though. Right, Some yeah. people sit alone and think and they think of nothing. And they spiral. So, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah. So I, I think the what is also key is to right. surround yourself with people you want to be like. Mm. You know, I think that's really... Great, yeah. That's Great. something that, that no one ever says. It's like, yeah, be you. Find out who you are. But no one ever tells you about the friends that you should keep, you know. Yeah. Yeah. People that you want to be like. You know, people that don't make you feel like crap on a daily. Yeah. Because yeah. like I've had friends that are like so passive aggressive about wanting to be together that just like oh we're not friends if we don't do this and if and it's my like friend, you will message me to call me yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, and so, so everybody <laughs> everybody is friends at a different By level what? you know right, kind of yeah, yeah cool, kind of right sorry. So yeah. like, I think it's really important to surround yourself with people that you aspire to be also. Yeah, right. I like, agree. Don't be afraid to reach out to people that you want to be like. You yeah. know? And just like from there, try to be friends with them and try to try to have them surrounding you. If 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 you put out the same vibes, right, you will generally be friends. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, I love that point because I was going to say something like um, in, in the efforts of getting over the obstacle, which is yourself, mm. it's you're never alone. You're never the, the beauty about life is when you finally realize all this and you have a good support circle of friends, yeah. 
getting over an obstacle is easy because you got a people get like you can do it you can do it we've done it i've not done it let's get over it together yeah yeah man you know human yeah. beings have never been we're supposed communal, to live yeah. alone we're right. communal mammals that's true, yeah that's and true. now that the world is starting to isolate us and that's where where yeah. these problems start we're to, mammals. You know? mammals so that really seek out seek out people who are like you man like it doesn't matter if it's like online offline out in the library or whatever. i mean there's the relationship yeah. of cesare with the kl people here ming yu and cesare spend more time online yeah we hang out like every day for every like three hours day. and the best part is and we don't even see each other i don't think they even go out of the house yeah we don't we don't <laughs> and no. like my mom is like me you got friends i'm like <laughs> I think I, I, oh, actually I, I think he got yeah. <laughs> online. Me, you have friends. He's yelling in his room yeah. <laughs> into his <laughs> microphone. Yeah. 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 But I think just kind of like to, to wrap up the, the, the podcast here, I hope you guys got uh, some bits and pieces to take away and think yeah. about, about from, from Cesare's story and everything we talked about today. Um, there's definitely a lot of things to unpack, but I think maybe what we can leave you with um, is some of the, the key... I guess just thoughts about how there is a need for self-awareness mm. yeah. and not just knowing where you want to go but how you're going to get there. And also hey. at the end of the day, it's just kind of like... You don't, have, you don't have to get there alone. You don't have to get there alone, no. man. You're not. And maybe that's something that, you know, the, the you can stop being just a you and you could become a we. Mm. Yeah, right? that's nice. And I, I think we were We's all... always nice. Mm. Yeah, we, we, we all want to chase dreams but we don't have to do it alone. Yeah. Yep. Right? So just be, be, be real, be vulnerable. Um, sorry, any final words for your friends and fans, listeners? Thanks for watching. Listening. Stream my music. List- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah too. Thanks for listening, watching. It, you know, your small effort of learning how to teach yourself piano is yeah. now at a 5.8 million play count on oh, Spotify. Really? Okay. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> so, woo! Guys, make that. sure you guys thanks, stream thanks, thanks. on Spotify. Mm-mm. His latest music video, In Secret, is out on YouTube as well. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for being here today, dude. Yeah, yeah thanks for having always me. Always a pleasure having you around. Love yeah. talking to you guys. Shout out to the Cesare fan base and everyone listening in. Thank That's you right. for listening. Uh, yeah, tag us if you're, if you're listening. We want to hear your thoughts as well yeah. about this topic. Uh, if you guys want more Table Talk, you can mm-hmm. listen to all our Spotify podcasts. We're also available on Apple Music. We'll and see you in the next one, guys. See you, guys. Peace. Peace.